is good. Amen. 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 All the time. All the time. God is good. If you have your Bibles with me, welcome. If you have your Bibles with me, First uh, Corinthians, Corinthians three verses nine. Amen. God is good. Amen. Are you glad? Yes. yes. Are you sad? Amen. Are you happy? This is the King James Version. Just let me see what the Amplified is saying here in verses 9. It says, for we are God's fellow workers. And one translation says, co-workers. We are God's fellow or co-workers. His servants working together. You are God's cultivated field. His garden. His vineyard. Vineyard, God's building. You are God's building. His garden. God says, You are His building. Think of this. You are His vineyard. Vineyard is a place where grapes is. Right. You are God's garden. And we are co-workers with God. What a privilege is it to be a co-worker with God. So for the people that think that God must do everything for you. No. You are a co-worker with God. God has a part. And you have a part. If God gives you a gift, you need to receive it by faith. You must co-work with Him. Very important. Then don't forget, you are the garden. You are the building that God is working on. Alright. It's all about you. It is all about Him and all about you. He is one. He wants to open himself, and he wants to open your you. And you are a co-worker with him, and you are the field or the building for God and you to work in. You are the field and the building for God and yourself to work in. So you are much precious than we think. Much more precious. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So my theme this morning is rent the heavens. Rent the heavens and I want you to go with me to Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah 64. And as you can see, I have many scriptures that I want to read to you. It is not always like this. But it's important for me so that you can understand. I cannot understand how is people reading the word of God in the Old Testament and still think that when prophets spoke of the Old Testament or in the Old Testament, they did not know, nor focus, nor speak about you as the garden, 
you as the building, you as the co-worker of God in this place. The prophets knew, 1 Peter 1 verse 10 says, they knew the gospel, but it was a mystery for them. But they knew it was not for them. But they saw the gospel, they saw the plan, they saw the power and the grace that was to come to us. They know it was in God's mind and purpose that you will become the building, the temple, the home, the city, the place where God is working with. So you are precious. God loves you. He truly loves you. You must tell yourself, God loves me, man. It's all about me. So let us read. With that in mind, prophets is strange people. They speak words that doesn't make sense to a natural mind. Jakob, do you understand me if I speak English? Alright. Listen. They are strange people, weird people, prophets. And they spoke and they wrote stuff in the word that is sound strange to us. But it's all images and shadows of Christ to come. Because the Bible is a written word. Preaching or proclaiming a living word. Who is the living word? Christ. Jesus. Jesus Christ. So the word wants to open Jesus Christ as the living word. So if I'm going to read this, I'm going to read about Christ, I'm going to read about God and you with Him and the place, you. Alright? So, oh that you would tear open the heavens and came down. That you will tear. Rent. Tear. Tear. Or rent. The heavens and come down. Isaiah, Old Testament prophet, prophesied. Oh, that you will tear open the heavens. Tear. <laughs> oh that you would rent the heavens that thou would come down that the mountains might flow down at thy presence strange words but listen you are the building you are the place, you are the field, you are the vineyard that God wants to. Listen here, a prophet says, Oh, would you not rent the heavens? Open the heavens. What do you think he meant by this? It's all about you. Oh, Lord, but he speaks about the heavens but the heavens is actually you oh lord can you not come and open the heavens that the mountains might flow down at the presence do you think that this Ezekiel think of natural mountains or do you think that mountains can be man or men that it might flow down flow down at thy presence as when the melting fire burneth as when the mel melting fire burneth listen, fire that burneth the fire causes the water to boil rent the heavens the mountains must be full of the presence of God and when the melting fire burneth Fire is life and spirit. Fire is life to man. Jesus Christ said, I, John 1, 
John 1 verse 4 says, I am the light and the life of man. So the image of fire is light and life. It's spirit. I'm going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, and when the melting fire burneth, the melting, the, the mountains might flow down at the presence. The mountain is me. Zion is the Mount Zion. Zion is the church. <laughs> it's all about you. And when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the water to boil. What water? Ezekiel? What water? 2,000 years ago, John said, Jesus standing at the well, and there was a lady, and she wants to drink of the water, and Jesus will come and say to her, Hey, if you drink of this water, you thirst again. But if you're going to drink of the water that I'm going to give you, speaking of the Holy Ghost, is the water. It will be in you. It will come in you. And it will be like a well coming out of your belly. And when the melting fire burneth, when the Spirit of God, <laughs> oh, won't you rent the heavens, Lord? Won't you rent us, Lord? So that the mountains can be in the presence of God and the melting fire burneth. Amen. It's an image. Fire is an image of Holy Spirit. That will cause this water to boil. Water that boils come out. The water is inside of us. To make thy name known. <laughs> to make thy name known. To thy adversaries. Uh. To make thy name known. How you are God's building, you are God's acre, you are God's crown, and you are a co-worker with Him, and God's focus is on you, and He wants you to fill you, yourself, with His fire, and with His presence, so that the water can boil out of you, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, every adversary, any enemy against you, you can say, ah, I have something inside of me, I'm a co-worker of God. Can you, can you hear? I'm explaining you prophetic language. It's not about the heavens. It's not about mountains. Then the nations may tremble at the presence. So that the nations may tremble at thy presence. Jesus said, Lord, Father, I want the inheritance. Give me the nations as my inheritance. The nations must tremble at thy presence. Speaking the whole time about the nations. The mountain, everything is about people, the nations. When thou didst there, when thou did terrible things which we look not for, thou camest down the mountain flow down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by ear. Men have not heard, nor perceived by ear, since the beginning of time. Neither have I seen a God beside thee, what ye have prepared for him that waited for him. So this whole thing is talking about people that is waiting for Him. A nation that is waiting for Him. For what? For His presence, for His Spirit, for His fire, for the water to come in our belly so that it can boil out. So that God can be glorified. Tremble us, Lord. Bring Your Spirit to us. For beforehand, it, when this was wrote by Isaiah, beforehand, now let me tell you that Moses and Abram and all, Elijah and all those people saw awesome miracles. And Ezekiel and all these guys spoken 
awesome things. But what is he saying? He says, No one have ever heard, nor any eyes have ever seen, truly a God, O oh God, beside thee. What have he prepared for him that waiteth for him? What in plain English he said, you have not seen nothing yet. You have not seen nothing yet. What we have heard that the Old Testament prophets saw and heard and said and wrote, we have not seen nothing yet because there is a God and He wants to walk beside me. Oh, that you may render the heavens. You see my man here? You see this is a, a window? The window open or the heaven open the heaven rent the heavens so that people can see we are co-workers of God Amen. and we are the building and the place He wants to open and show forth His glory. Amen. Let's go on. Joel. Joel. Sorry for my Afrikaans. I'm Afrikaans boo. I'm not English. Joel. Oh boy. Joel. Where are Joel? Search them. Huh? Search it. Yeah, Joel 2, verses 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. The Zion is the church and the building and the place where God is. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh and at hand. The day of the Lord cometh. The day of the Lord. Now the day of Martin is, what do you think the day of Martin means? The day of Martin. The day of Martin means the time when I will be born until my death. It's my day on earth. So the day of the Lord, what do you think the day of the Lord means? The day from His birth until He went through in the cloud. Alright, the day of the Lord cometh. And it is nigh, it is near. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. This sounds very bad. <laughs> But because we do not understand prophetic language and we do not know the word, we think naturally when we read stuff. So this, a day of darkness and gloominess. Ooh, a day of clouds and a day of thick darkness. This day of the Lord. <laughs> As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and the strong, there have not been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. There will not be a people like this. After the day of darkness and gloominess, a day of thick darkness, it sounds bad. Mm -hmm. But if you know the word, you will know that God says, I will stay in thick darkness. And this thick darkness means, in other words, glory. God stays in glory. But the prophet Joel said, God is in thick darkness. Glory. It means excellent glory. So he tries to explain things of a spiritual world, of a spiritual God, of spiritual man, all the prophets with spiritual words so that we can understand and receive and enter in. But for the natural mind, it doesn't make sense. That's why the Bible is sometimes so hard to understand. 
But it's easy to understand with his spirit. This day is a day of darkness for the adversaries, for the enemy, for sin. Because Christ will be born king and he will come and he will judge the world of their sin and their unrighteousness. And fire devoured before them. Fire will devour before them. Who's them? This generation speaking of. Fire will devour before them. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. And behind them desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Uh, man, who is he speaking of? He's speaking of the people that is in the presence of God with this fire. And this shaking, this mountain that shake you. And this fire that come and burn inside of you with war. Water inside that boiling outside of you, and you will be like a horse and horsemen running. Fire will burn before you, and before you it will be like the Garden of Eden. What do you think it means? The Garden of Eden is a favorable place, favorable, it's a blessing place, it's an awesome place. The Garden of Eden was a nice place, eh? Are you with me? And behind them, it's wilderness because we have fire in ourselves. Oh, won't you come and rent the heavens, Lord Jesus? Sure, sure. The appearance of horses and of horsemen, so shall they run. You see, when I read the book of Revelation, this is just an insect. I see that when they speak of natural things like horses, I look deeper and I see, oh, it is Christ. When Christ opened as a sheep with seven horns and seven eyes, the scroll, the seven seals, they came out horses. Not real horses. It's not something to come. It's the explanation of Christ, the opening of Christ for us. But that's another message. Go and see YouTube. You are like a horse, man. <laughs> Glory. And like horse, we are running. God is saying something through a prophet to you. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountain shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devour the stumble. Stubble. The stubble. Stubble is hoy. It is grass. As a strong people set in battle array. <laughs> that you know John was also a prophet and he speaks the same things as Zechariah and Ezekiel and all these people saying the same thing speaking about you you as co-worker with God it's awesome man it's awesome man before the face of people shall be much pain all faces shall gather blackness they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb up the walls like men of war. Then it goes on verse 8. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one his, his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Oh, uh, won't you come and rent the heavens, Lord? They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the walls. Alright. Verses 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Too deep. Is it too deep? No, it's not too deep. Lord, open it. Did you know that Jesus Christ said 2,000 years ago, Hey man, my kingdom and my will is in heaven. But pray that my kingdom will come in earth. In earth. 
My kingdom is in heaven. Pray that the kingdom will come in earth. Listen here. In earth. So, where is the kingdom of God now? In us. The Bible says in us. The kingdom of God is a mystery that's being revealed to us. Jesus Christ in us, the hope of glory. And they will receive the kingdom inside of you. So, in earth. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The Lord Jesus Christ said in Ezekiel and Zechariah and all those people and John, He will say, Hey, I see a new heavens and a new earth. The old will be passed away. An earth and the heavens where righteousness indwells. O oh Lord, will you come and rent the heavens? <laughs> Man, I have scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Believe me, if God says, I make something new, I will come and make a new earth. I will come and make a new earth. I will shake the earth. I will shake this dust. I will shake your body. I will bring my spirit in you so that righteousness can come and dwell inside of you. I will make a new heavens. Do you think there's anything wrong with our heavens? No. The heavens and the earth and the mountain and the horses and the trees of the field will clap their hands and the sea and the water and everything is images of you. God wants to open him and you, you are precious. Every word was to open Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And for you to receive him inside of this. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. I will come back and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Who is his army? We are. For his camp is very great. For the strong that execute, executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? It's terrible for the sinner. Because God is fire and he will come with his holy fire. Down the mountain with his presence and he will burn his enemies. It will be terrible but it will also be great for the great army before him. Who accepted him as Lord and Saviour. The sun and the moon shall be darkened in those days. Prophet prophesying about something. Who is the son of righteousness? Jesus Christ. He will be darkened. It means Jesus Christ will die. And the moon will be darkened. The moon is mankind. Because the moon shines in the night time. The sun's light. Do you know it reflects the moon reflects the glory of the sun and the light. So in Old Testament prophets, the sun is always God. Always. And the moon is mankind who reflects His glory. Mankind that reflects God's glory. But when Jesus Christ hung on the cross, Jesus the sun died. It went dark. The moon could not shine for three days. It was darkened. Verses 12, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with your fasting and weeping, and rent your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, and slow in anger, and great in kindness, repenteth to Him of the evil. Rent your heart, Oh Lord, will you not come and rent the heavens? You are a co-worker of God. He says, Oh, rent your heart before God. Rent the heavens. Oh Lord, come and rent me. Rent my heart before you. Come and shake this earth. Shake everything in my life that's not from you. That's what the prophet is telling us. So that only God and His glory can shine forth. Boil this water inside of us so that it can come outside of us. So that we can work with God truly 
in the gardens and with the gardens and with the buildings of God. Is it, is it too difficult for you to understand? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. The assemble, the elders. Gather the children and those who suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Who do you think is the bridegroom? Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. And who do you think is the bride of Christ? Us. Let the bride come out of the chamber. Everything I've heard of read to you so far, it's about you as a bride, as a wife of Jesus Christ, as a co-worker. My God's glory for the earth, O oh Lord. Let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porches and the altar. I'm going, I'm skipping, I'm skipping. I want you to understand. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Um, let, just let me see this. Yeah. Hmm. All right, let's go to verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. <laughs> you see, if you start from the beginning, you read slowly, and you meditate on God, and you ask God, open it, open this prophetic words to me, He will open it, you will see, ah, it speaks of this church. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Who is Israel? The new Israel is us, the church. There is no Jew, no Greek, no, what is that English word? Gentile, no, an Afrikaans, no slave, no man, no woman in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are all the spiritual Israel and the people of God now. Lord, and now what else? And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. 2,000 years ago, if you go now to Acts 2 verse 15, we will come back to this one. Acts 2 verse 15. <coughs> now Peter is a disciple of Jesus Christ. And he said, now, listen, do you remember what I've preached now to you about Jewel? When Jesus went into the cloud, before he went into the cloud, he said to his disciples, Disciples, I want you to go and wait for the Spirit of God to come into you. Everything I said to you this far. Because you are the body now. Just go and wait. You have never seen a God beside you. Never. Go and wait. You have not seen nothing yet. Go and wait. Dairy, wait upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the disciples went, they wait upon the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit Pentecost came, and the Holy Ghost fire fought them. And there were scenes, what? Fire, tongues of fire. What if I said, oh Lord, won't you come to this mountain with your burning fire? So that we can come in the presence of God. And Peter is saying what John is saying because he says, But for these is not drunk as you suppose, because they are speaking now in other language and tongues. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day, it's still early, man. But this is that which was spoken by Prophet Joel. And now he's saying, and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, on your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your man men shall see 
visions, your old man shall dream dreams. Now he's quoting what Joel said. But Peter says, this is the last day. So Peter is not wrong. Peter is living in the last day. Listen yeah, man, you are wrong if you say, I live in the last days. <laughs> Bible time, if you speak about last time, or last hour, or last end of the world, or all this stuff, it's the end of a Jewish reality. It's the end of the law. It is a new thing God wants to do. As a new Israel, a new people, let the earth be shaken and rent the heavens. I want to make a new place. The place is you. I want you to be my building. I want you to be the ground. But you need to work with me. You need to be a co-worker of God. Do you understand? He's quoting what John said. And then he said, They will prophesy. On my servants and handmaids, I wrote, read that, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. He's quoting Joel, but did you think that they saw with their natural eyes vapor and smoke and blood? No, but he is quoting an Old Testament prophet, speaking of a spiritual thing. What spiritual thing? That God will open men up with His Holy Spirit, fire, smoke and blood and vapor. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord comes. This notable day is a day that is notable. It's notice. Notice this day. This notable day is now, child says, I... The, the sun and the moon will go dark before that day. Peter is saying, this is that spoken of Joel. Before this notable day, what notable day? The day when the Holy Spirit will be fall upon me. And the heavens will be rent. The sun will go dark, Jesus Christ had died. And the moon became like blood. Why? <laughs> because Jesus is the son of righteousness. When he died on the cross, his blood flowed for all nations. And the moon was dead for, uh, according to Job. The moon went black. But according to Peter, it went red because he saw that the blood of the sun went over the moon, mankind, and washed them and prepared them as the building and the place and the ground in the vineyard for God. Hey man, this is awesome. Say yeah. Amen. And it shall come to pass whatever, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hey, it's all about the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, won't you come and rent the heavens? <laughs> Open us up, Lord. I want to rent. We have read, read, read it. Yes. It's a job. Malachi. Now, Joel. Yeah. Oh, Isaiah yes, said, rent your heart now before God. <laughs> rent your heart. Let's go to Malachi 3 and I finish with that. Malachi 3. Ain't this awesome? Amen. Amen. Malachi 3 is an Old Testament prophet, the last prophet that God called. And after this prophet, for 400 years, it was silent. No man ever spoke of God for 400 years. And then, uh, Jesus Christ came. All of them prophesied for 400 years it was silent. And then Jesus Christ was born as king. Amen. When Jesus Christ came and he was born as king, he started to speak about the kingdom. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Did you know 90% of his words was about the kingdom? I want to speak to you about the kingdom of God. I know a man that was sent far away to receive a kingdom. You are my kingdom man. 
You are my place. You are my dwelling place. Your body will become my uh, my kingdom. Your earth must be shaken. Lose yourself of sin. Shaken so that the Spirit will come inside of you. And you can work with God. Amen. Malachi 3. Behold, I will send my messenger. Malachi, Old Testament prophet. And he shall prepare the way before the Lord, whom you see, shall suddenly come to his temple. Who is the one he's mentioning who prepared the way of the Lord? John, John the Baptist mm -hmm. was the one. Malachi prophesied, was, uh, he said, Behold, I will send you a messenger. He will prepare the way of the Lord. 400 years later, John was there. I said, I am the messenger. Come. I've come to prepare the way of the Lord. But listen, to prepare the way before the Lord, whom ye see, and he shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller soap. That means when Christ will appear, he will be like a soap. What do you do with soap? You clean yourself, man. That's why that day is dark and terrible. Because it will be dark and terrible for sin and unrighteousness. But it is like a refiner fire. A fire that refines you means it cleans you. Amen. And he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord the offering of righteousness. God wants to cleanse you so that your offering can be an offer of righteousness, but God wants to come to the temple. Now, Malachi said, but I have two problems with you. You're stealing from God. You're stealing from God. And, and, and the Jews and Israel at that time said, how do we steal from God? God says, two ways. First, with your acting. And secondly, with your words. You are robbing me and I want to come to the temple. Who is the temple of the Lord? But you robbing me. Just let me read you. I will come near to you to judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. And then it's going on. And strangers for his right. And fear not me, says the Lord. For I am the Lord. And change not. Therefore, your sons and Jacob. Where am I? Yeah, I'm, I'm verse six. I'm verse six. Malachi. Yeah, I'm still on the right path. Verse eight. Verses eight. Will a man rob God? Yes, you have robbed me. But ye say, where enough we rob you? In tithes and offerings, you have cursed. You are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even the whole nation. You can rob God as nation because you do not rent your hearts for God. You do not act right and you do not speak right. But if you bring all your toys into the storehouse, listen, that there might be meat in mine house and prove me now herein, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the heavens, the windows of heavens, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be no room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You see, natural people is natural. They read the Old Testament as natural. Everything is natural. So in this portion, the church is ministering to people about tithing. So if you get your money, give a tithe. Because there's a blessing on it. Yes, that's true. But this, 
is the Old Testament prophet speaking of much more, much greater things than only your tithe and natural thing. You see, this one is only a, a show, an uh, acting, an uh, acting of what God did for us when we bring our tithes to the house of the Lord or speak the right things. But there is something greater. There's something deeper that the prophet trying to explain to us. He says, you are robbing me because you do not rent your hearts. You do not rent. I want, Lord, that you will come and rent the heavens. Come and rent the heavens, Lord. Open us up. Open us up. It stops with this. It says, Prove me now herein, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. So, heaven has windows. Do you think it's that heaven? Do you think that heaven has windows? What do you think is this heaven? With windows. If you honor me, I want to come to the... Let me help you. I want to come to the temple. <coughs> I've said here... I've said here... That we are the building, the place, the temple of the Lord. I want to come to the temple. Then we have read here that the heavens and the earth is you. The building and ground and stuff is you. You understand that? Now he says, if you honor me, I will open the windows of heaven. Heaven is us. I want to come to the temple. If you honor me, I will open the windows of heaven. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart. Since Jesus made everything right. The windows is you. God wants to open you as window to see. A window, you look through a window. The windows of heaven. If you honor me, I will open the windows of heaven. Heaven has windows. Open the windows. Why the windows? Because you see through a window into heaven. If you honor me, I will open you as window of heaven so that people and nations can see in you and through you heaven. Who is dwelling in heaven? God. You must honor me. Oh Lord, may you come this morning and open, rent the heavens so that I will come a blessing, a true nation, shaken in the presence of God, filled with your glory, filled with your honor. And so that I can be a co-worker of you. Open me Lord, I'm going to honor you. You want to come to the temple and you want to open the windows. You want me to be a blessing and a co-worker of you. Open me so that people can look inside of me and see Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what I preached this morning. I have open prophetical language so that we can understand. It's all about Jesus Christ opening Him and opening you. And you can see yourself in that. It's nothing else. Amen. So you are precious and you must close your eyes. Say, Lord Jesus, I honor you. 
We praise your name. We give glory unto you. Lord, open the heavens. Open this spiritual window so that I can become this blessing as you promised me. You want to come and fill me with your glory and with your light. So Lord, use me. I'm precious. I'm precious in your sight. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.